Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. I hope you're all doing wonderful this morning. I am excited to be here with you this morning to share the Word of God. I am. I got to tell you, I've been preaching the Word of God for a few years right now. And there's something special about stepping up here and sharing the Word of God with other people. Amen. So as, as we open the Word of God today, I want you to keep me in your prayers and I also wanted you to keep yourself in your prayers because I, 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 my, my, my wish today and my prayer is that you can understand what God wants to speak to us. Amen. And we're going to be uh, talking a little bit today about a story that we're going to find in the book of Acts. If you can follow me with your Bibles, the book of Acts chapter 19, and we're going to be reading verse 11 through 17. Acts Chapter 19, verse 11 through 17. I titled my sermon this morning, Jesus whom Paul preaches. Jesus whom Paul preaches. And after I titled my sermon, I was thinking perhaps the sermon should, should be titled differently. Perhaps, as, as you will see, uh, perhaps the sermon should be titled, Do They Know Your Name? Hmm. Let's read the word of God. Acts 19, starting in verse 11. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Verse 13. Then some of the itinerants Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus who Paul preaches. 14. Also, there were seven sons of Siva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. Verse 15, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? 16, verse 16 says, then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Because this became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. May the Lord bless his reading this morning. When the scripture says that Paul was doing extraordinary miracles or unusual miracles, it means that they were not ordinary. Because if you ask me, and if I was to witness a miracle, a miracle for me is extraordinary. Amen? How about you? If you witness God doing a miracle through you or through someone else, it is extraordinary to see the work of God. But there's an emphasis that the author wanted us to see, and it, it was that he was doing extraordinary. They were unusual. They were not ordinary. But the point here with Paul and the reason why Luke is emphasizing in telling us that they were unusual miracles, it is because not always were the apostles allowed to do miracles at will. Mm. The Lord grants his servants, including us, the apostles, you and myself, for that matter, a special power when the progress of his cause or the honor of his name is demanded. So they were not allowed to just go walk up and down the streets doing miracle as they please. Amen. It had to be a divine reason for God to give them that authority. Right. And for God to give them that power. And this is the reason why, in this special case with Paul, the author said that, that God was doing extraordinary things with him. And we're going to see, as we move along with the sermon, what he was doing. 
Paul was executing these unusual miracles in Ephesus to extend that a certain fame, a success came upon him. Not because he wanted that fame, not because he was searching to be famous, but it simply just came to him. Amen. Now, I know we could probably all agree as human beings, we all want to be successful, right? We all want to be successful. And I could say probably some of us want to be famous or want to have a certain fame, right? Uh, for example, if you have a doctor, a doctor wants to have a successful practice, right? A mechanic would love to have a mechanic full of customers and have a successful working shop, correct? Correct. Uh, you you can have probably uh, a singer wants to be successful. My 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 sister Sara Capeles, she's a gospel singer, and she's very successful. She's already uh, recorded I think six or seven CDs. Um, maybe a theologian wants to be successful, right? Someone someone spiritual wants to have the ability to interpret the word of God properly and share it with the world. Amen. Uh, some people measure success with money, the amount of money that they have, the, 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 the amount of zeros that they have at the end of that dollar bill, right? Uh, some people may measure success by the car they drive. Some people can measure success perhaps by the square footage of their house. Some people by the title they have before their name or the initials they have after their last name could be a, a, a sense of success for them. The desire for success is not just in the secular world, but also in Christianity. The difference is how you acquire that success. Amen? The difference is how and what you do to be successful, especially in the kingdom of God. Now, in the secular world, we know that a lot of people like to climb the ladder, stepping on other people. Come on now. Deceivement, lies, discrimination. But there's only one way to be successful, brothers and sisters, in the kingdom of God. And that is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no other way. You may think there's another way. You may try to bypass Jesus, but you are not going anywhere. <laughs> Because the only way you're going to be victorious in this kingdom is through Jesus. Amen? Now, let's talk a little bit about Paul. Because Paul had a certain fame. But Paul had an anointed success. Amen? He didn't have a success, like I said before, that he was looking for. It just simply came to him. Because when you are a man and a woman of God, listen to me. When you are a man and a woman of God, you're going to shine whether you like it or not. You're going to shine. That, that glorious image of God is going to follow you wherever you go. And that was the issue with Paul. Paul was well known for his fame and success as an ambassador of Jesus. Paul was a very powerful man. He was a very powerful man. Understand this, dear, that when Paul preached, he did it with power. When Paul preached, he did it with authority. Amen? When Paul entered a place to preach, he was so filled with the Holy Spirit. Hmm. The Bible says... That the sweat that's coming out of his body was to have the healing power. Amen. That's how powerful he was. Verse 12 says, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them. And not only the diseases, the Bible says that even evil spirits went out of them. It's amazing how, how much power he had that he didn't even need to be present for the miracle to occur. Amen. This is why Luke says that his miracles were unusual. His miracles were extraordinary. That's how much power you and I can have in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, it is necessary to have a clear understanding that these people were not healed simply because Paul was praying for them. We can pray. You gotta have, you gotta pray. You gotta pray with power. But that's not where the power is. The healing came from the anointing that was in Paul. 
Because you can pray all you want, brothers and sisters, but if you don't know Jesus, if you don't have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, these are just words that are going to be coming out of our mouth. Amen? So we want to have that power that Paul had. Paul did not need it to be present for the miracle to take place. Now, in the time of the story that we're discussing here, there was an exorcist in Ephesus. There were wandering Jews. The Bible says in verse 13, then some of the itinerant, uh, these are vagabonds or strolling Jews, exorcists, took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus. I need you to follow me with this, okay? Don't get lost now. To call the name of the Lord who? Jesus. Over those who had evil spirits. Saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. There are a few things that we need to put together for us to understand the message today. And why this exorcism that these sons of Siva were trying to take place and it, it nothing happened. Okay. When we look at Matthew 27, 12, 12, 27, it seems to imply, and I'm going to read it, Matthew 12, 27, it seems to imply that this type of power did exist at least for some time and perhaps not by the power of God. And here's what Matthew 12, 27 says. And this is Jesus talking to the Pharisees. And if I am empowered by Satan, what about your own exorcist? Mm. They cast out demons too. So they will be condemned for what you have said. See, these Jewish exorcists were quite popular in the first century. These exorcists travel all around the places like modern gypsies, fortune tellers from place to place. That's following, right? The Jews were specially addicted to such practice with spells of sorcery connected with the name of Solomon. So they were kind of like saying spells, and, and, and by the spells that they were pronouncing, apparently these demons or spirits would come out of people, right? Obviously, after watching Paul's miracles, here, here's a good part, guys. After watching Paul's miracles, these popular magicians hmm, picked up on the idea of carrying out their business in the name of Jesus. Hmm. I got to tell you, I, you know, if I'm going to do miracles, it's got to be in the name of Jesus that Daniel Perez preaches. Amen. But they picked up the idea, looking at the success of Brother Paul, thinking that that these were special words that he was saying. Right. And said, well, we're going to do the same thing, you know, and, and we're going to make money out of it because that, that's what it was. It was a business. Right. So let's let's see what we have so far. OK, let's see what we have so far. We have a man of God. Working extraordinary miracles. And I'm going to bring this to the, to the 21st century, right? We have a powerful seven-day Adventist saturated with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Praise God. So powerful that even the sweat of his body had healing power. We have a group of members in the church, seven of them to be exact, that thought they were walking with God, but it turns out that they were walking with someone else. Hmm. I have a question for you. Is it possible that because my daddy is a pastor, that his anointing will give me power? See, this, this is what they were thinking. These seven sons of Siva, he was a, a, a Jewish high priest. So, so you know they kept the Sabbath, amen? You know they were going to church on a regular basis. Their daddy was a pastor. So they thought that because their daddy was a pastor, that his anointing was going to come to me. But I got to tell you that Jesus is a personal savior. Amen. He is a personal God. And this is the reason why we pray. We persevere in prayer. Not because God needs to know what we want. Not because we need to tell him what we need. Because he knows that. It's because he wants us to have a relationship with him. Amen. And that is why we pray. Is it possible that I can be sanctified by associating myself with a brother or sister in the church that is filled with the Spirit of God. Mm. It's not possible. And we can see it in the story. 
Let's break this down a little bit more. As soon as the demons heard, I command you in the name of Jesus. Guess what they did? They started packing. Is there power in the name of Jesus? Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. So, so when these guys, they said, in the name of Jesus, these, these are demons or these, these demons started packing. He says, well, we got to get out of here. I got to get out of here because in the name of Jesus, we have to leave or I have to leave. Right. But as the demon was walking out the body of this host, when he heard the following sentence in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, Hmm. Whom Paul preaches, the demon unpacked, and he said, I don't have to go nowhere. I'm staying right here. Because, see, the problem was with these guys is that they were proclaiming the name of Jesus, and it wasn't the Jesus that they knew. It was the Jesus that Paul knew, right? So they didn't have the power that Paul had. They just had simple words coming out of their mouth. Hmm. So the demon said, at first, in the name of Jesus, yeah, I got to go. But in the name of Jesus, who he preaches, no, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and in our daily life, in our daily walk with God, dear family, we are dealing with demons day in and day out. And we need to know that Jesus that Paul preaches, amen? We need to have a relationship with, G with that Jesus. Because you may know the name of Jesus, but you really, really need to know the man Jesus. Amen? You really, really need to know the man Jesus. Demons, do they know your name? This could be the second title of the sermon. Do they know your name? Let's read verse 15. This is, this is the, 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 main, the main verse of, of the sermon today. And the evil spirit answered and said... Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? All right, first, I want you to notice that the word know that Luke used in, in, this, in this verse is not the same know that he used for Paul that he used for Jesus. You follow me? So we, we need to understand this, okay? So, so, so when, when, when Paul, when, when Luke wrote and, 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 and the demon said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? The demon said, Jesus, I know personally. Okay? The word that is used here in the original language is genosco. Okay? Jesus, I genosco. Jesus, I had a personal relationship with him, okay? And Paul, I heard about Paul, a peace to mind. I genosco Jesus, and I peace to my Paul. You follow me? There's a big difference. Because see, with Jesus, you know, oh, I know Jesus. I, I remember, I remember when Jesus cast us out of heaven. Hmm, because these were, these were fallen angels. I remember when, when Lucifer tricked me in, into believing that we could overtake the kingdom of God in heaven. And, and, I, and I had a personal relationship with Jesus. I, I, I did not school him. Paul, I am acquainted with him. Epistomai, meanings that I have heard about Paul. The demons knew Jesus because of the history. That they have with Jesus, correct? Now, this is something that I really had to dig into when preparing this. How is it? How is it possible that Paul is not a celestial being, but the demons respected him? How is it possible? They were acquainted with him. The word acquainted, it's in the, origi the original language, epistomai. They were acquainted. Another word for acquainted is aware. So the demon was aware of Paul. Is the demon aware of us? Hmm. Lord have mercy. Is he aware of us? 
It's important that he is aware of you and he is aware of myself. The demon was aware of Paul. See, when the demons got together and, and, and they're up wherever they are and they get together and they start talking to each other how they're going to plan to destroy our lives because this is what they do, right? See, Paul's name came up, amen? <laughs> and they were aware of Paul. And they were aware of the Jesus that Paul preached. And this is so amazing, and, and it is so powerful that the same demons that were afraid of Jesus were afraid of Paul. Lord have mercy. I want to be like Paul, amen? I want them demons to be afraid of me in the name of Jesus. The same demons that were afraid of Jesus were afraid of Paul. Paul was closely aligned with Jesus. He was closely aligned with Jesus. Let me let me let me see if I can explain a little bit. I have I have a, a story to share about my sister. I told you my sister sings. She sings gospel music. Her name is Sara Capeles. And one day there was a big concert, a, a big evangelistic event in Orlando. And I don't get to see her often because she lives in New Jersey. And she could not come over because it was a thing that she was in the event and she had to fly out that same night. You, you guys know who, who travel past the right? When, you, know, you know, you have to just be there in the meeting and catch on the plane and be somewhere else. So I, I told her, well, let me just drive up there and I can, I can see you, right? So I went over there and, and, and I went to the church. It's a big church in Orlando where they were having the event. And, and, and I asked for her and, and they told me, well, she's in the back room with all the person and people who are going to participate but no one is allowed back there so I go in the back I knock on the door and the deacon opens the door and he says who are you and I said my name is Daniel Perez and he, and he says to me I don't know any Daniel Perez come on now <laughs> then I said well I am the brother of Sara Capeles as a matter of fact there she is right there so he called her out. She said, Sarah, is this your brother? And she said, yes, he's with me. You see, when, when it was found out that I was acquainted with the singer, what happened? Everything changed. The guy smiled at me. He even gave me a hug. Come on in, Mr. Perez. You see, when you're acquainted with Jesus, Lord have mercy. When you're acquainted with Jesus, the demons are going to be afraid of you, Lord have mercy. They're going to be afraid of you. They're going to respect you. No one's going to be able to put, get in front of you. No one will touch you, praise the Lord. Because you are acquainted with Jesus Christ. When we have a close association with God, the creator of the world, there are certain places that you are going to be able to sit in. Amen. Because not because of your education, not because of the money you have, not because of your last name, not because of the family that you are associated with. It is because you are associated with Jesus. And he is going to be able, brothers and sisters, to put us in places that men are going to be awed. No one can touch us if we are associated with Jesus. I must tell you today that you will never, never, ever hmm, hmm, be successful unless the demons know your name. Because it is not, it is not asking your name as an identity. The demon says, who are you? He knew their name. But he wanted to know under what authority you're telling me to leave. Under what authority you're telling me to leave. So we go through trials and tribulations, temptations, day in and day out. And unless we are associated with Jesus, you are in serious trouble, my friend. Because even if you invoke the name of Jesus, the demons are going to say, who are you? Sometimes we blame the devil for the way we are living. Follow me. But these people could not even do that. 
These seven sons of Siva, they could not even blame the devil because they didn't know who they were. It is not a question about identity. It is a question about authority. Have they heard about you? Have they heard the power that you have? Have they heard that you are a man and a woman of prayer? That you pray so much that when you pray, things happen? Have they heard that you are so connected with God that when you enter into this church, when you enter into a building, the atmosphere changes? Praise the Lord. And it is only because you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you can be an influence, brothers and sisters, to the person standing next to you. Jesus, I recognize. I've had a personal relationship with him. I know Jesus by experience. I genosco Jesus. Paul, I am acquainted with. I have heard about Paul. I epistomai Paul because Paul is associated with Jesus. But who are you? The devils are asking, the demons are asking. Under what authority are you walking this earth? Under what authority are you calling yourself a Christian? He doesn't care about our name. He just wants to know under what authority we are walking this earth. Luke 11, 9 says, and I say unto you, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall open unto you. The Lord is waiting for you and for me with open arms. All we need to do is knock. All we need to do is seek. All we need to do is, is ask. And he is there for us. <laughs> do you think it's bad for us to find out through the word of God today that the demons need to know our name? They need to know by what authority we speak. Well, let me bear some bad news this morning. It will be our worst nightmare. It will be our worst nightmare to find out that Jesus, Jesus does not know who we are. Forget about the demons. It will be our worst nightmare, brothers and sisters, to find out that Jesus does not know who we are. And let me go to the scriptures, Matthew 7, 21 and 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Verse 22. And on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy on your name? And cast out demons. Cast out what? Demons in your name. And do many mighty works in your name. Mm. Verse 23. I don't even want to read verse 23. But I got to read it. And then I will declare, this is Jesus speaking. This is our Savior. This is our Lord. This is the man that died on the cross for you and me. He will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Forget about the demons not knowing your name. Make sure that Jesus knows your name. Amen. Make sure that Jesus knows your name. The word new, here's the thing about this verse. This is why we need to, we need to dig into the word of God. The word new is the same word that he used for, for when he know Jesus. Genosco. And this is important. You know why? Because when God comes, when Jesus comes and pronounces this word to many people, he's going to say, I was never acquainted with you. I never had an intimate relationship with you. I was never associated with you. It is so sad, dear church, dear members and family and friends who are watching us on social media, that you can think, that you can think that you're walking with God for 20, 30, 40 years. And that glorious day when Jesus descends from heaven, he's going to tell you, apart from me, I don't know who you are. Let's make sure, church, let's make sure, family, that Jesus knows your name. Forget about the demons. I want Jesus to know my name. When Jesus is standing there declaring these words, I'm going to walk around. I'm going to pass right through. 
And we're going to do the same, right, church? Because we're not going to listen to these words because we are going to make sure that Jesus knows who we are. Amen? My prayer today is that none of us here, none of our friends and family listening to this message, our Elam Church members who are not here, who are on social media, never hear these words from Jesus. Amen? I pray that the Lord will bless you, that the Lord will protect you, and that he will show you mercy and kindness. May the Lord be good to you and give you peace. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Have a happy Sabbath. I'm going to go ahead and pray. And, and those who are in church, can you please stand up? I know in, in, in your TV over there, your, your phone, your tablet, wherever you may be, I want to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for one more time guiding me as we preach your word. As we have found out today, it is, it is of the utmost importance that Jesus knows who we are. And I pray that you descend upon this church, upon each member, that you descend upon our pastor, Dr. Vane, with your Holy Spirit, Father. And you, you can give us the strength to keep moving forward. That when the demons come and they say, who are you? Well, perhaps they will, need, they will not need to say it because they're going to fear us the same way they fear Paul. Thank you, Father, for your mercies. Thank you for your love. I pray for every person that's going to be watching this message. Any, any, any church members out there who are still think they're walking with you, but they're not. That you can strengthen our path, Lord. Straight to the cross of Jesus. Help us to be faithful. Help us to be a light in this place where you have put us, Lord. And when you come in heaven, Father, oh, Lord, give us the joy and the happiness to raise our arms up in heaven and say, this is our Jesus. We have been waiting for him. Thank you. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen.